This time, on an Architect Reviews, I once again return to the shifting sands of Daymar to examine a beautiful luxury ship, the RSI Constellation Phoenix. In this video, I will take you on a tour of this new RSI ship, utilizing my skill set as an architect to both examine the successes and shortcomings of the design in the hopes of providing some constructive feedback to assist the designers in future reworks and future designs. It's also a great opportunity for me to tell you guys a little bit more about what architecture really is. So without any further introduction, let's get started. Beginning here on the bridge, you'll notice that it's quite familiar, and that's because it's identical to the bridges of the Aquila and Andromeda. The only differences that I can see is perhaps a slight change in paint color, though I may be wrong here. It seems there's a lot more whites in this version, which I think would be quite fitting. For that reason, I won't be spending very much time back here, devoting most of my time in this video to analyzing the midsection, which is the new part of the ship. Though it's good to take a look at it before we go back there to start to lay the groundwork for understanding the design language that's already been set forward by RSI. Angular, utilitarian, and pretty basic. A kind of design language that doesn't easily lend itself to luxury, so I'm sure that this was a bit of a challenge for the designers to translate into something that seemed coherent, but we'll have to see. Transitioning through the crew space and into the luxury cabin presents a stark contrast. The design language here appears to be very successfully translated from utilitarian to luxury. The walls are white unadorned but still angular, and the floors are finished instead in wood rather than steel. Which is why it pains me to begin this critique with a negative comment. No matter how well lit, how well adorned, and how exquisitely detailed a space can be, it can always be overpowered by unresolved procession. And in architecture, this is just a fancy word we like to use to describe the way we imagine the user proceeding through a series of spaces that we've designed in a very intentional way. And unfortunately, this, and not the previous entry, is the actual first experience of the user, which is unfortunate because this entry does make quite an impact and if I were to make a revision on this project, I would highly suggest that the ingress point be rather here at this logo and not below and through the crew section. This is, I think, very important for, say, a luxury vessel. But now I think it's time to continue our tour of the Constellation Phoenix into the first bedroom here on the right. Notice the material change on the floor from wood to carpet. This is a very good use of material as carpet can help absorb sound and make a small space feel a lot more comfortable. It helps to reduce the acoustic problem with small spaces that create weird echoes, kind of like, you know, a bathroom. Though what I'm starting to see here in the design is a really successful translation of the angular design language of RSI into something more luxurious. The edges are no longer sharp, but are instead rounded, giving a much softer and cloud-like quality. However, I feel like the lighting could still use a little bit more development in the residential spaces, as there's no reading lamp, you'll notice, for the bed. And while you might not actually be reading books in this day and era, it is nice to have a personal light in the space that, you know, doesn't flood the entire space homogeneously like the ceiling light. Also, I'm not quite sure how you feed the fish, but I guess if you can afford this ship, you can afford to keep buying new ones as they die. The second guest bedroom is very much the same, although a bit more angular and perhaps a slight bit smaller. It also has a fish death trap, and likewise could use a reading lamp. But now we move on to why people buy the Constellation Phoenix. It's showpiece, the Grand Room. Moving from the very compressed space of the forward cabin, it's very unusual and perhaps even a little shocking to see such a large space in the midsection. I think that this effect was very well done. I very much also like the very intimate and well-human-scaled seating area. The lighting is very appropriate, the lower ceiling makes it feel like you can have a conversation, and the change in floor material is also very much welcomed. What's also wonderfully successful about this space is the understanding of the importance of lighting and how that can play a role in the luxurious feeling of a space. 
I must really compliment the designer here in the way that they understood that space can really be defined by light. Here the floors are lit up in a very bright white so that we can clearly see where we're going but have a little glare. Whereas here in the intimate speaking and sitting space, we have blue, very cool lights, which here give a much more relaxed feeling to the space. Some of you Star Trek fans might also be getting some 10 forward vibes from the Enterprise D. That would be TNG for you non-Trekkies. It's very much in that vein, and for me, I personally approve. I loved the lighting and feeling of that ship. Really what a fantastic place to sit down and watch the clouds, planets, and stars roll by. It also definitely is giving off vibes of luxury private jet rather than, say, luxury private yacht. And I very much suspect that that's why I feel that this space is so much better conceived than the 600i. You see, on small vehicles like a private jet, space is at a premium, so you need to make the most of what you have. This ship makes a small space feel big and comfortable through the use of changes in ceiling height, lighting to make contrast of different spaces, subtle threshold and material changes. It's very successful in that way, and I really wish that the 600i designer would have took note of this sort of design. I hope in the future that they're going to better utilize that interior space because this is a true example of how you can make a small space still feel very comfortable. Just imagine how much more useful space we could have on the 600i considering its mass, its size, as compared to a ship like this. Moving into the center atrium here, I really appreciate that this bar is at the end. It really gives it a feeling of being the hearth or the gathering place of the ship. And I very much appreciate how the skylight here extends the space vertically, making it feel much more grand and large than it actually is. Unfortunately though, we kind of see a little bit of a breakdown of Orisai's aversion to right angles with this very strangely shaped corner. The only thing you can really do with this space is place, uh, say, a decorative stand, which I think is fine, but it kind of leaves that space maybe feeling a little bit awkward. Across from the awkward corner, we find ourselves either a meeting or dining table, however you wish to perceive it. In either case, it seems like a great place to have a dinner party, entertain guests, entertain business partners, or even a love interest. All while watching a beautiful landscape roll by through this beautiful panoramic window. But now we move on to a point of the ship I'm not particularly a fan of, but some of you I'm sure will like, and that would be the jacuzzi. You know, the thing that you buy for a ton of money, use once, and then forget about for years? Yeah. Well, since it's sort of like a subjective thing, I'm going to focus more here on some of the more design issues that I have a problem with, like how there's these component doors directly adjacent to uh, a tub full of water. Well, this may not only be an electrical hazard, it's also quite confusing for guests. Pressing these buttons, initially, I didn't realize that these were component hatches. I think that a user might confuse them, say, for like a refrigerator, a television, or a drink stand or something. To me, there really doesn't seem to be a reason for it to be there when there's a perfectly open spot here near the RSI door in the engineering section. You could have easily put a door below this side and the right side uh, here and uh, kind of tuck them all into one area, perhaps putting it against or behind another door to conceal the more mechanical parts of the ship from the more uh, luxurious area. Also, about the engineering door, it's really distracting and doesn't fit with the established luxurious design language of this section of the RSI ship. You know, it's just these small details that really would bring it up to a really polished state. I feel that it's still a little bit rough around the edges, but overall, it's a lot more successful than the 600i by a very large margin. I feel much more comfortable in the Phoenix than I do in the Origin, and that's really unfortunate. The master bedroom is a bit of a mixed bag. I really like the panoramic window behind the master bed, but I find the lack of shading to be somewhat concerning. It doesn't provide any sort of protection against glare from the sun or provide privacy from outside viewers. 
The ceiling is also a little bit impersonal. I would have preferred them to use a little bit different language here in the master bed than the exact same languages out in the, the large space. The one-way window also makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable, and this is something I've heard from a lot of people who've used the Phoenix. I think it's an accurate assessment and they should probably change it. Also I'm pointing to a kind of a lack of integrated shelving here because I feel like there really should have been something where you could put down your Moby glass or your glasses because that little thing on the side of the bed really is insufficient. But again I think overall the room is very comfortable. I, with these minor polish changes I think it could be great. Getting rid of that weird window where you feel like people could be looking in on you could be a good improvement. And the lack of interior decoration is fine because we know we're going to be able to personalize our space in future, so that's just fine. But now it's time to move on to a rather interesting feature of the Phoenix, and it's something that I have a bit of an issue with, despite its maybe Millennium Falcon coolness. While the entrance to the cargo bay is quite clever and actually quite cool, and although the space inside is very large, larger than the Aquila or the Andromeda, it is unfortunate that we have to go through the luxurious program to get here. This is the only entrance to this space, so if crew needs to access any of these high voltage panels, they're going to have to walk straight across the view of the VIP guests. This circulation error is something that was also present in the 600i, and it's really unfortunate that it's popped up here as well. What I would have suggested instead is to add an entry from the forward cabin that goes through the cargo area and exits through the rear engineering section. This important feature would prevent them from alerting guests to the fact that there may be uh, an issue perhaps with some of the mechanicals on the ship, also would help them do maintenance without having to track grease or tools through a very clean space, disrupting the party of the highly esteemed guests. So if there were to change something about this ship's layout, that would be another big one for me aside from the entrance. But now it's time to move on to what I think is the least successfully designed feature of the Constellation Phoenix. Now earlier I said that I like the idea that there's a hearth here, the bar, and I stand by that. I really like that there's a bar here, but there are some details about this bar that really bother me. This television, for example, seems to have been added after the fact. It's like escaping the frame. It doesn't fit in and it's kind of on like an angular wall. It feels very awkward and last minute. Whereas the one on the right there seems to have a place to live in that black zone. Also, probably the most egregious detail here is the way that the designer tried to blend the granite into the wood. It's like they couldn't decide whether or not they wanted granite below the stools or wood. I've honestly never seen something this strange before, and when I first saw it, I thought it was a mistake. I thought they accidentally put a texture on top of it, but if you look closely, you know, it's actually supposed to be there. It's actually following some of the grooves. Honestly, I would just get rid of it. Speaking of the granite, it's not very good looking. It's very builder grade. I mean, in, in granite or, or stone working, we, we have tiers, like three of them. Uh, three being the most expensive and exotic, one being the most builder, cheapest grade you can get. And to me, this is very much a grade one when this ship really should have grade three. Maybe like a Calcutta gold, that, that's like a, a white marble from Italy with gold flakes in the veining. That would have been much more fitting. This back wall here where you display bottles is also far too busy. There's a new material introduction here, it looks like slate, and there's two different material patterns. That coupled with the increase in angles, the increase of geometry, the weird tier one granite, and then the circular arch over the logo all create this really distracting effect that really doesn't need to be there. To quote an architect legend, Mies van der Rohe said, less is more, and in this case, I definitely agree. But really, overall, this and the entrance are the weakest points of the ship. I could live with the cargo section being the way it is, but the bar being so visual as it is now and the entrance being so unfortunate and disappointing as it is really could use a change if they're ever going to slightly rework this design, though I imagine they probably won't. But say they do ships in the future, maybe they can use this information to apply it to future luxury ships. 
In conclusion, with the exception of the entry in the bar, I find this design to be wildly more successful than the 600i. And would I have to choose between the two, I would choose this ship hands down. Once again, the issue resides mostly in the way the spaces are organized, something that I think that CIG could benefit from paying more attention to. It is a beautiful ship, and so it's a shame that the way the spaces are arranged should counterbalance the success of the interior design language so much. It really does a whole lot more with less. The exterior, like in the other versions I reviewed, is also quite beautiful despite the fact that it's been lengthened and widened. And although it might come off as a bit cliché, I'm a big fan of the white and black color scheme. I find it simplistic, clean, and beautiful. But maybe you guys disagree. I want to know down in the comment section below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Connie Phoenix. Also, let me know what you guys would like me to review next. I really love doing these reviews and the feedback that I've gotten has been phenomenal. If you guys are looking to get into Star Citizen, make sure you also use my referral code down in the description below. It gives you 5,000 starting UEC and helps me get more ships to make more great content like this. Also, if you guys are looking for a great community of players to get into the game with, make sure you check out Armco, a community I founded with two other YouTubers. It's also a great place to get involved with me in future videos and ask questions in person. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you guys next time.